What is going to kill you? Yes, I know this is all rather morbid, but what can maths and science tell us about how you're going to die? If you know the things that are statistically most likely to end your life, you can avoid them, right? Consider this a public service. You're welcome. First, the big one. According to the latest stats from the World Health Organization, the WHO, the number one cause of death in the world, death's best friend, is ischemic heart disease. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering, what on earth is ischemic whatever it is? Well, it basically means a restriction in blood flow caused by obstacles in the arteries. So ischemic heart disease includes lots of different causes of heart attacks and heart failure. The rest of the WHO top 10 are mostly diseases as well. You've got your strokes, your respiratory infections, HIV, diabetes. In, in fact, the only violent non-disease death in the top 10 is number nine, road injury. But wait, I hear you saying I always look both ways before I cross the road and my arteries are perfectly healthy. These stats are not gonna help me. How am I gonna die? Well, that's why truly guessing a cause of death needs two things. The first thing, you need a good set of data about when people die. And secondly, you've got to get up close and personal. To predict how you might die, we need to know a little bit about you. That's because your age, your sex, the country you live in, they're all important factors that will affect what you're likely to die of. And we need to have a big set of data where we can try to tease out the causations from the correlations. Looking at the UK, for example, the number one cause of death in men aged 50 and over is heart disease. For women between the ages of 50 and 79, it's lung cancer. And at over 80, it's dementia. Whilst both males and females aged between five and 19 are most likely to die in traffic accidents. Now, of course, not everyone in those age brackets will die of those things, but they are the leading causes of death for those ages and genders. And this is what those online death countdowns, those death predictors, those life expectancy clocks that you find on the internet do. And in fact, the death clock, the internet's friendly reminder that life is slipping away is one of the first ones that comes up when you search. And it asks you about your age, sex, smoking habits, BMI, the country you live in. And then they use a data set straight from the WHO to calculate your death rate. Now, if you'd like a less world focus and a more British focus test, then there's UBL, the UK Longevity Explorer, which will calculate your risk of dying in the next five years. And it was put together by the NHS using data from the huge UK Biobank study, which collected data from almost 500,000 middle to older age adults. We'll put a link in the description to that, but sadly, due to that data set, you can only get any use out of that calculator if you're aged between 40 and 70 years old. These tests can get pretty specific. There are all sorts of things that seem to affect when you die. And some of them often lead to very excited and credulous news stories, such as marrying a younger man shortens a woman's life expectancy. Living far from the park shortens your life. Chilies help you live longer. The list goes on. The real scientific truth behind these headlines is often difficult to track down. It's possible that chili lovers have other lifestyle differences that impact their life expectancy that weren't measured. And for all we know, women who enjoy the thrill of dating a younger man may also enjoy the thrill of whitewater rafting. At the end of it all, we can never really predict death with perfect accuracy. But let's end with a bit of hope. A huge predictor for how soon you're going to die is how old you are. Of the 529,655 deaths registered in England and Wales in 2015, two thirds of them were aged 75 and over. That's a lot of people that got to live long, full and hopefully happy lives before the Grim Reaper came calling. Click here to subscribe to Earth Lab. See you soon.